Praise the Lord, everybody. How's everybody doing? Blessed. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank God. Hope everybody has had a great uh, start of the week so far. Plead the blood of Jesus that we can keep our call going and that the internet doesn't go out. <laughs> but we certainly thank God that we're here. Thank God that everybody is online. I hope everybody is ready for a great experience from the Lord tonight. Uh, we've been enjoying our series, Unleashing the Gospel. And I tell you, we've had someone get saved. We've had people get healed. We've been getting praise reports of miracles that have been happening. And I tell you what, I am excited. There is something awesome that happens when the gospel of Jesus Christ is released. When it's released in the atmosphere, there's major things, major miracles that can happen in your life. And that's what we want to talk about tonight. I'm not alone tonight. I'm blessed tonight that we're going to go in a uh, different format. We're actually going to have a panel discussion. And I want everybody to listen to this panel discussion because I have some wonderful men of God tonight that are going to share uh, some knowledge and experience with you uh, about God and how you can get closer to him and how we can execute this gospel, this great gospel in our life so that we can see major results. And that's what it's about. When Jesus comes into our life, he comes to change us and give us major, major upgrades. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get upgraded tonight. Praise, Praise the Lord. So tonight I want to introduce to you uh, the speakers that are going to be on the panel. I have with me tonight one of what I call my brothers in the gospel. Me and him were ordained into the ministry around the same time uh, at Refuse Temple Church there in Burlington, North Carolina. He is certainly a great friend of mine. I am glad to have him a part of this call and he's gonna bring some of the mighty word of God tonight. And we are in expectation of great things. So I wanna to introduce to you guys, uh, Elder DJ David Cabness tonight. Praise the Lord for you, sir. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank, you. thank you. We thank God also that we have with us a pastor, uh, one of my great friends uh, from Maryland. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he has a wonderful church there. I've uh, had the opportunity to preach for him several times. And I tell you, when awesome we get some time, he is a uh, son of thunder. Hallelujah. He is a preaching machine. And uh, we have him here tonight to share some wonderful, wonderful knowledge of Christ. And that is none other than Pastor Christopher Miller. Praise the Lord for him. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. And uh, also, I am very honored tonight. Uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce to everybody who my spiritual father is. Um, he has been very instrumental in my life. Uh, I've seen so many wonderful messages from him, but I've also seen a lifestyle of living for Christ. And I tell you, I would dare anyone say that their spiritual father is better than mine. Hallelujah. I have a great one tonight, and he is a preaching machine, as well as a teacher, as well as an evangelist, as well as a prophet. Hallelujah. He operates in the ministry. Hallelujah. Very well. And we thank God for him tonight. That's none other than my spiritual father and mentor, Bishop Reginald Davis. Praise God right. for you, sir. I want to, I'm, I'm the moderator. I'm going to chime in, but I want these guys. It's, it's, it's very informal. You don't have to give, you know, you're politically correct. Just let it loose. We're unleashing. We're unleashing the gospel tonight. So, Elder David, we're going to start with you tonight. And we've been talking about this great gospel, unleashing the gospel, according to the book of Colossians. That is when he's given a very, very vivid image of what the gospel looks like. And he's given an image of what Christ looks like. He says that Christ is the very visible image of the invisible God. And I just want to start with you tonight. Just tell me a little bit, when you're impacting the people around you and in your community, what does the gospel look like to you? Um, it, it, it basically, for me, it reaches the masses um, and and. Uh, I work in education, so when I think about the kids that I impact um, and I look at myself, I reach, I need to go where they are to pull them up, 
to to grab them to where I guess that where they need to be. And when I think about the uh, Christ, Christ always reached somebody where they were um, to pull them up um, and not not say, hey, you need to be where I am. Um, he all he always reached down to pull them up to uh, where they needed to be. Right. So there's an upgrade in that community of yours. Most definitely, most definitely. Pastor Chris, give us a, a vivid image of what's going on in Maryland. What does unleashing the gospel look like in your area? And what is your experience with that even down through the years? I know you've been saved for a while. I think even since a teenager. And tell me what the gospel looks like. What 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 is this great gospel? What is this that Jesus is talking about? Well, Pastor Philia, uh, I think that when I think about the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, I think about his birth, his death, his resurrection, and his soon coming again. One of the preachers, uh, one of the bishops that, you know, spoke into my life once said that to, to us. He said, you know, if you're going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, you must talk about his birth. You must talk about his death. You must talk about his resurrection and his soon coming again. Now, when you talk about that, you want to reach people where they are, of course. And, you know, when you talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ, what are we dealing with? We're dealing with the sin factor, if wow. you will. We're talking about sin because why did Jesus even come out of heaven? Why did he leave his throne of glory to come out of heaven? He came to redeem mankind from sin. And so that's that's what you t you tell people you 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 talk you you see them where they are, you know, in 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 whatever situation, whatever type situation they're in. Hey, the gospel of, of Jesus Christ is good news for you. The mm -hmm. prostitute, good news. The mm -hmm. homosexual, good news. Mm -hmm. Whatever state they're in, I've come to give you good news that Jesus died to liberate you Amen. to bring you were destined for what? All of us were destined for uh, the wrath of God. That's right. we, 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 we sinned, and so we deserved punishment. We deserved the wrath of God. But Jesus Christ came with good news, and that's what we preach. We preach the good news that Jesus has a better life for you to make things better in your life. Amen. That is awesome. That's an awesome answer. I tell you, when you think about the gospel, that is exactly what you think about. You think about us in a very depraved position. Absolutely. From the day that we were born, we were depraved. We were sinners. Romans chapter three says that uh, we all have sinned mm -hmm. and that we all have come short of the glory of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, one of the things that always strikes me, Pastor Chris, is that many people only consider about 10 to 15, 10 to 15 things sin. <laughs> true that this is true this is and, true <laughs> and so they feel like well if i'm not committing these 10 or 15 things then i'm already okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know yeah. but one thing yeah. that we understand is that there's a sin of commission but there's also a sin of omission exactly it's not just exactly. what you do wrong mm -hmm. it's what you're not doing right that you're supposed to be doing yeah we we, we like to think of the cardinal sins uh, but Jesus died for our purification. I mean, your mind can be corrupt and you don't even know it. Right, <laughs> I mean, exactly. it, and so he died to purify that mind. He wants your mindset to be pure like his. And yeah. so, you know, that's why he came so that we could be like him. You right. know, we, we talk about want to be like Jesus, want to walk like Jesus, want to talk like Jesus, want to think like him. Well, he, he came to give you all of that. You know, and, and and so his blood redeemed you from the penalty of yes. sin, if you will, yes. redeemed whatever mindset you were in. And I mean, some of us have some have crack minds, you know, right. it's it's in the totally in the gutter. But he came to deliver your mind from the power of sin and darkness. Wow. Wow. Powerful. Thank you so much, Pastor Chris. Thank you for that. Bishop Davis, we're coming to you to chime in. Go on and take us to another level. Well, um, my two brothers have been very eloquent, right. but the words that come to mind as it relates to the gospel and um, Pastor Chris broke it down concerning the death, burial, and resurrection, but it's a love story. Yeah. It is a, it's a love story and, and you can't preach the gospel in its entirety and not share the love of God. Right. And that might be the reason why for some people the gospel sounds redundant. 
but there's nothing redundant about love. Love is what it is. You know, I, I've been married for 30 years to this woman and our love is not redundant. All right. It, it gets new every day. And the love that Christ has for us is everlasting. It's what draws us to him. We're drawn to him by that love. The other word that comes to mind is transformational. Right. That as Jesus endured um, life, death, resurrection, he was transformed. Right. And so we should be preaching a transformational gospel that changes people. Right. And because the same experience that Jesus underwent in order to bring us salvation, we must undergo in order to obtain salvation. We have to repent. And repentance is a death of self, is a death to the world, is a death to sin. Then the baptism or the burial is baptism. And I know a lot of people debate the merits of water baptism, but water baptism is a biblical principle. All right. Yeah. Jesus, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, but it's an outward representation of that inward conviction and that inward repentance. When people die, you bury them. If somebody died in your house, you would not just leave them in the chair they died in. You had to take them out somewhere and bury them. Right, and so when right. people come to the pool, when they come to the water, they're being buried. The old man is being buried so the new man can rise and walk in newness of life. And when Jesus was resurrected, he rose to his glorified state. All power in heaven and earth is in my hand. And when we rise with the infilling of the Holy Spirit, we're transformed. Right. And so you can't have a gospel without transformation. And so, you know, you raised a good point earlier about the issue of sin. The Bible says all unrighteousness is sin. That's right. and, and, and in fact, we're not sinners by deed, we're sinners by nature. And right. so that kind of covers the good people because there are a lot of good people out there. They right. don't bother anybody. They pay their taxes. They pay their bills on time. Right. They don't make trouble. They keep their dog in their yard. They don't bother anybody. But that person is still unsaved and still needs to be born again, born again because we were all born into sin. And, right. so, if, if, and so the last word, and, and then I'm going to stop talking, is universality, which right. means everybody everybody needs to hear the gospel everybody needs to obey the gospel and everybody needs to experience the transformational power that comes by accepting and obeying the gospel of jesus christ wow that's so powerful bishop that's so powerful and i'm going to stay with you um bishop davis right here because we had some wonderful wonderful uh inputs here uh of course elder cabinets was talking about that christ upgrades uh Pastor Chris was saying that Christ loves. Um, you're kind of bringing those both together for transformation. Um, if Christ is this wonderful love and this wonderful great gospel and he's upgrading, all we can see that is he brings good things to our life, that he brings good news to our life. Then we have to think about the people that are not accepting this great gospel. We have to think about the people that when they hear this gospel, what is the challenge to the church? Because when we look at um, the book of Acts, when we go to the book of Acts and we look in uh, chapter two, that after that the people, the early church, Peter and the apostles, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. The 120 in the upper room were filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that after the experience that they had with the community, the unrepentant, so to speak, that 3,000 were added to the church that day. That means that they saw something and heard something that struck them as good, love, upgrading, transformative. What should be our approach? Because many people don't know how to witness this gospel. That's, that's what I believe. Because if it's so good, it must be a disconnect somewhere that is causing people. It's just like if they have a million dollars down the street. I don't care how bad it's raining. I don't care if it's a thunderstorm. I don't care if it's five pit bull dogs. I'll walk through five pit bull dogs to go get that million dollars because that's, that's an upgrade that would transform my life financially. So Bishop, just tell us a little bit about what our approach should be as far as ministering to the unrepentant souls. Well, the, the first approach is we got to start preaching the gospel again. Wow. And, you know, one, one of my um, critiques of um, postmodern, um, Christianity is that we are more concerned with the human condition than the spiritual condition. 
Wow. Consequently, most of our preaching is about how to make my life better, how to make my marriage better, how to get more money, how to walk in, in prosperity, how to live in this and live in that. And so, I mean, I would challenge anybody that's watching us tonight to remember the last time they heard a gospel message, wow. which is normally Christmas and Easter. Wow. And so as most of the world doesn't hear the gospel because we've stopped preaching the gospel, Come you know, and, and, and so much of our attention, it quite honestly, you know, having been in church for almost 50 years now, most of our attention is geared towards internal maintenance and not external outreach. Wow. And in fact, if you are a pastor and you preach for evangelism too much, the saints are going to say, you're not feeding me. Right. And, 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 and some of that is the transformation of church culture. Some, most of you have been in church most of your lives. You remember that church was very different than it is now. Um, Sunday morning was when we reached the masses. Sunday night was when we got ministered to. Prayer meeting, we got ministered to. Bible class, we got ministered to. But that Sunday morning experience was geared towards you reaching people because that's when most people who are unchurched go to church is on Sunday morning. But right. now people don't go to Sunday night service anymore. Most of us have given up Sunday night service, quite right. honestly. Most of us have given up Bible class. You know, the one blessing of the pandemic is that more folk are going to Bible class by Zoom than ever went to Bible class in person. Come on, Bishop. <laughs> Come on, other, Bishop. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> but reality is that so as a result, the church has lost its evangelical arm. Wow. Okay. It's not, it's, it, we don't evangelize anymore. And because we no longer evangelize, we're no longer preaching the gospel. So people aren't getting saved. Wow. And so the first thing we've got to do is redirect our audience. This first, and, and, you know, it's funny that the first two letters um, in, in gospel are G-O, which means go. Wow. Which means the church has got to move itself to a position of going to do what God has called us to do. Yeah. You know, um, I came up in an era in church, and I was a part of two very different churches um, both apostolic, one in New York City, you know, mega church, 3,000 members in the 70s. You know, um, the other church was a typical church between 150, you know, 100, 150 members um, throughout my time there. And the reality was both of those churches, what they shared was they evangelized. Right. I preached on the street in New York. I preached on the street in Henderson, North Carolina. Right. And both churches had a radio broadcast. Both churches tried to wit went door to door witnessing. And most churches have given that up completely. You know, yeah. the witnessing, the connection, the trying to, what we now do is recycle members. Wow. We take them from church around the corner to our church and we say we're growing. That's not growth. No. That's, no. that's just transfer. That's, not, that's oh. like moving money from your check account to your savings account. It's still in the same bank. <laughs> right. <laughs> no new money has come in. Exactly. And, and no new souls have come in. Right. And so what has to change culturally is the church has to rediscover its mandate to win the loss. That that is the reason why we're still here. Yes. And if everybody was saved that would be saved, the rapture would have already come. We ought to be out of here. Right. All right. And so the reality is because God has left us here, we have a mandate to evangelize, to reach the lost, to go after souls. You know, and, and, and I'm going to say this and I'm, I'm going to be quiet. You know, every time I preach, I expect somebody to get saved. Right. Because I believe in the power of the gospel. Yes. And yeah. so whether I'm in the pulpit in, in my church on Sunday morning or I'm overseas in the Caribbean or I'm in someone else's church, every time I preach, I expect someone to be saved because I believe in the power of the gospel to save lives. But if we don't preach the gospel, then how are they going to hear the gospel? Come on. Come on. And that's something that you always taught us. I remember, you know, when me and uh, Elder Cabinets was, was there at the time, uh, you always said, you know, son, you can preach, you know, you, you can shake the mic, but how big is your prayer line? And that always stuck with me. I'm like, you know, if I, if I preach this wonderful message and nobody is coming in my prayer line and nobody is, 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 is desiring to be saved, that should bother me as a preacher. That should bother me no, as a believer. Because um, we preach for response and not for souls. Wow. The most critical part of the message is the altar call. Right. Because that's when you're challenging people to make a decision. Wow. And and what we normally do now, once again, this, you know, and, and, and I guess I've got a lot of history. I, I, I remember church without the dance at the end of everybody's sermon. 
Right. You know, and you know, we the word was preached, and the most important part of that message was, was that altar call. Right. That sinner to come down for that backslider to come to be reclaimed. And now, if I get them into a frenzy, we jump, and I'm 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 gonna be very critical here for a moment. We jump from the dance to a to a gift offering. Everybody grab twenty dollars. Everybody grab fifty dollars, and <laughs> right. nobody say. Right. <laughs> nobody got saved right but we right. had to raise a consecration miracle offering because that that's our mindset is a an emotional response and then get some money wow wow that is awesome bishop that is awesome right there i mean that's a real challenge for us right here uh elder cabinets i want you to come in right here are the saints afraid are we afraid of the people on the street are we afraid of the unrepentant what's going on <laughs> I, I want to be real. Think it carefully. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not sure if it's afraid or um, they don't really know how to reach the people that's outside of the church. Because um, uh, Bishop Davis says something that that that's so real. You're not, you know, you're not finding new converts. You're recycling people. So right. what you end up doing is, and I, I remember. Um, just listening to him um, from years ago, some of the messages he um, has taught, you know, hurt people hurt people, right. period. So when you are hurt, you don't know how to go out there and, and bring in new converts because you, you really, you got this wall up, you know, for yourself that you're not really willing to go out there and, you know, make yourself vulnerable. Um, and I think um, when you go back to the gospel and, and like Bishop Davis said, you know, there's a love aspect of that. Right. So if you don't really uh, truly love yourself, how can you bring somebody else and say, hey, I, you know, this God is the God of love, but you're not showing love. Right, right. You know? So right. I wouldn't say that they are scared. I, I just don't, I don't think they know. Wow. Now that's very interesting because Bishop Davis is saying, and he he, he responded that, there's not being a much preaching of the gospel. There's also not much teaching the current believers how to minister the gospel in the streets. That is interesting. Well, if, if, if I could interject, what, what's, what's missing is discipleship. Wow. Okay, that, that, that's a missing piece of it. We are, we are more concerned with membership than discipleship. Oh. And, you know, and, 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 and this might be post um, my two sons here, that the Lord really started dealing with me about discipleship, right. that it was not enough for me just to grow a church. And I thank God we grew a church. All right. right? But it wasn't about growing a church. It was about growing disciples and disciples are followers, learners and imitators of Jesus Christ. Wow. All right. They're going to follow, they're going to learn and result of following, and then they're going to begin to imitate those principles. And if they imitate those principles, they have to love, right. they have to preach, right. they have to win souls, because that's an outgrowth of being a disciple. But what we do, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm a part of the church paradigm, so I'm talking about us, what we do is we get them in choirs, we get them on the usher board, we get them in auxiliaries, we get them serving, but we never taught them how to be disciples. What does it mean to follow Jesus Christ? It, it became more important to us that they join something as opposed to follow him. And wow. when that's the nuance, that changes the whole relationship. That I'm not trying to get you into my church. I'm trying to get you to become a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, if you happen to use our church as a vehicle of that, that's wonderful. But right. the main goal is I want you to become a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. When that happens, it transforms your life. And you grow, and you learn, and you become what Christ wants you to be. That's awesome, Bishop. That's awesome. If, if, I, can, if I can interject too, Bishop David, that, that's so important because I think when you come in and you just have people join auxiliaries, that stunts their transformation. Absolutely. That, that, that hinders their growth um, in Christ because we're saying, oh, we're doing all of this in the church, but we're not spending time or relationship with him. So we can't grow to the level that we need to to evangelize or to become a disciple right 
Right. Mm -hmm. And then can I just say this? Because you because you put me on the choir and I'm a good singer, then I become an entertainment piece and I just entertain folk all day long. Wow. And 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 I'm never interested in discipleship because I think I'm a star in the church. That's a problem. That's a problem. It's a huge problem. You know, it's it's activity above relationship. Right, right, right. Just because I cook the meals a woman cooks the meals, takes care of the children, and cleans the house. Doesn't mean that's your wife. It could be your maid. Right. Right. Okay. Exactly. There's no relationship. It's mm-hmm. transactional. Right. right, right. Exactly. And we develop people in a transactional model because Chris can remember this and 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 and, and maybe both Elder Cabin and Elder Phil y'all remember this, that when you went to choir rehearsal, you had prayer before choir rehearsal. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it wasn't, you know, just to let's bow our heads. You got on the floor, you prayed, and you prayed, and you prayed. And when you got mm-hmm. praying, through praying, then we had rehearsal. Mm-hmm. Then yes, we had yes, pop, yes, 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 yes. then we had whatever. Because mm-hmm. the relationship was more important than the activity. Now the mm-hmm. activities are more important than the relationships. Right. And exactly. we almost made the other things scarce. And that's why we're not growing disciples. I mean, the old church did it without even knowing what they were doing. And when we started streamlining ministry to fit the culture, we threw away the best parts of spiritual right. development right. and spiritual efficacy. And so we have, we have a, I'll say by comparison, our presentation is better, but our substance is weak. Wow. Right. Right. Now, now, now this, I want to chime in here because you guys have some very wonderful, wonderful input here. This is, this is awesome. This is all, I'm getting thumbs up and stuff from people. This is great stuff. Pastor Chris, I want to come to you here. I want to ask you, um, as we're talking about this discipleship piece, we understand that in order for us to be Christ's disciple, we must have the spirit of Christ on the inside. Mm -hmm. We must be led by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It is only through that that a person has the ability to do what's right and to Mm -hmm. do what, and to become and conform to the image of Jesus Christ and to do what Jesus did. Mm-hmm. The saints of God should have the Holy Spirit. If you if you have come in and you got saved and you got filled with the Holy Ghost, I'm guessing that you still should have it. Um, <laughs> I'm guessing that 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 if you claim that you have the Holy Ghost, that you should still be functioning as a believer that is humble. Watch this, humble, willing to be teached and willing to be obedient. That is an attribute of the Holy Ghost. But check this out. If we have saints that don't want to minister the gospel and the Holy Ghost should be giving us the unction to to be a uh, 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 minister or uh, con- uh, or compelling, begging people to come to Christ. I-, I remember what Jeremiah says. Jeremiah says he tried to hold a word in because mm-hmm. everybody, you know, people around him didn't want to hear his word because it was it was bringing uh, uh, the, the, the punishment of God. He says, so I tried to hold it in because I wanted to be popular. I wanted to, I wanted, I I wanted to have friends. He said, but when I tried to hold it in, it was like fire. Mm -hmm. Shut up in my bones. It was like fire. So I had to release that word. Mm -hmm. Should the saints of God be to a place, if you have the Holy Ghost, that there should be something on the inside of us, if we're communing with the Holy Ghost, that there must be a release of God's kingdom on the earth. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so Pastor Phil, y'all, you know, as a preacher, a minister of God's word, my my responsibility is to the ministry of reconciliation. Right, I want to tell sinners that they can be reconciled to God, and 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 like they said earlier, that's the only reason we're here because you know other things we could do better in heaven, perhaps. You know, we we will be just be better in heaven, but we are to let people know. You you talked about us being depraved. All of us are depraved. None of us are exempt, right? We are no good. So you need to tell you need to tell all the stars and celebrities <laughs> that we are no good. Right, We're filthy right. with your 154 million in your account, whatever it is, you know, we are no good. Right. And that we need to be reconciled to God. That 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 word reconciliation uh, is, is is very important. It simply means that man and God get together. 
All right. right. So meaning yeah. you have you, you a, a sinful creature, depraved person can now be reconciled to God, you know, and once you receive his spirit, you know, you, you want to do just like that first century church do. What do they do? They met from house to house in what? Prayer. Right. Fellowship right. with God. Come on. So, so, you know, to receive the Holy Ghost, that's one thing. You spoke in tongues. Well, are you going to develop a prayer life now? Come on, come on, little come on. boy. On. When I got saved, come on, little boy. Are you going, what is God saying? Right. Are you in the word of God? Yes. Are you, be, are your, are your gifts being cultivated? You know, you, you know, you spoke in tongues, but are you now watching pornography? Mm. Little boy, did you, did you move to that era or right. are you still in the word of God? Because, you know, we're cleansed through the word of God. We grow by being in the word of God. We grow by hearing the word and doing the word, not only right. a hearer, because, you know, as you said earlier, you could preach the, the, the sermon, preach a good sermon and they shout and fall out. Some of them didn't even hear me. Uh, let me just talk about me right now. I was oh. at a church preaching and they were shouting and jumping. And the Holy Ghost said to me, Chris, they did not hear you. <laughs> they oh. did not hear the word of God. They were emotional. They had a good shout, but they did not hear what they were supposed to hear. Maybe a few did, maybe, but the Holy Ghost said they didn't really hear what thus saith the Lord. They got emotional. And so I think that, you know, when we, when, when we receive the Holy Ghost, I forgot your question, Pastor Phil. <laughs> <You already forgot. laughs> the Holy Spirit, but with this great gospel that we have, shouldn't mm -hmm. it be bothersome to us if we pass by sinners every day and not minister this gospel? Shouldn't it be like fire burning in our bones, in oh, our yes. belly oh, yes. to oh, release? Yes. Oh, yes. We, we ought to want to share the gospel of Jesus Christ every day with somebody. We ought to. Every you know, we, every we, every well, single here's the harsh we reality. Mm -hmm. Here's the harsh reality, brothers. Mm -hmm. How many people have claimed an experience without the substance of that experience? Wow. Say that again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once again, you know, I, I, I feel like an old man because, first of all, all of you are much younger than me. You're a little bit old. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Because I thought you were saying I was older earlier. <laughs> 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 I feel like an old man in this conversation, but okay. I remember very vividly, um, you know, when I received the Holy Ghost, the, 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 the press in the senior saints to teach me how to pray, to teach me how to hear the Holy Spirit, to teach me how to walk in the Holy Spirit, so that the Holy Spirit became my constant companion. And so with, with that relationship, there's a compelling, you know, I mean, I've been in the grocery store. And just had to tell somebody about Jesus, you know, while they bagging their groceries, you know, look, I, we don't know each other. <laughs> the Lord told me to tell you that he loves you. And, and I've done that. I, I mean, I've done that. I mean, you know, right. when, when, when I was in college, I started a Bible class, you know, in the basement of the dorm, you know, because it was just in me to try to get people to come to Christ. And even, you know, and, 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 and I don't buy this notion that even though I'm a pastor and I carry a title and all this other stuff, my, my, my basic work is still soul winning. Right. You know, my basic work is still soul winning. I, I, I see myself as the pastor, as um, the lead soul winner in my church. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not waiting. You know, some people have this old, and I, and I hate this cliche. I hate this cliche that um, shepherds don't forget sheep, but sheep forget sheep. That is the biggest cop out right. of pastors in the right. body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Because right. if I'm the shepherd, I have to create the paradigm by which sheep can reproduce. That's right. All right. So if they're not reproducing, that means I'm not feeding them. So they're not healthy enough to, to make babies all right? Right, <laughs> and to right, make, right, and right, make right, little, right, right. little lambs. And, mm -hmm. and so, 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 and, and then I've got a model for them how that process takes place. I've got a model for them. How do we reproduce? How, how are souls won? How are people brought into the kingdom? And they need to see me do it. You know, I, you know, I, I've been blessed for years with a staff of ministers and missionaries and deacons, but all of you know me, I work the altar in my church. Right. I baptize people in my church. And I don't do that because I just want to do it. I do that because I got to be seen doing that to model that this is ministry. You don't mm -hmm. preach, drink the orange juice, grab your money, right. and go to the car. 
what right, you right, do right, is right, you right. stay there and you labor with the souls because that's what ministry is. And if the saints see the leaders do that, they develop that hunger of wanting to see people born to the kingdom and it becomes part of the culture of the church. Mm -hmm. wow. you, you're the example of, of uh, or the epitome of, 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 a, of a servant. That's who you are, a servant. Yes, exactly. And so that's what you exemplify. Exactly. But, you know, in the last couple of decades, we haven't seen true servants. They, they have left the That's church. We have seen right there, Pastor Chris. I, I want to input this right here. And I, and I will stay with you, Pastor Chris, right here, since you, you're not running. Then we'll come to you, uh, uh, Elder Cabbage. You said something about the last few years, what we've seen. Pastor Davis uh, Bishop Davis just said about exemplifying um, himself what he wants the church to do um, as well. Now, in ministering the gospel, there should be, I, I always feel like when we read uh, the, the, the epistles of the Apostle Paul, Paul was very cognizant about the culture. He understood his culture. He understood what was going on in Corinth, Galatia, Thessalonica, Philippi. He knew what was going on and he ministered from that standpoint. Now, every preacher and pastor, I'm going down a road too, Bishop. I'm going down a road too. Every bishop is not like what Pastor Davis described there. A lot of members have suffered abuse directly or indirectly from leadership. And that abuse could be every Sunday, your preacher is telling you about hell. I'm being honest, hell is a real place, but I don't want to hear it every Sunday. That, I don't want to hear fear messages every Sunday. That, that would do something to you psychologically. That's why the gospel is good news. It's telling me how not to go. It's not saying, oh, because you were late today, you were five minutes late, you you on your way to hell. No, that's abuse. That's we we don't we don't do that. And people have suffered from that. They've seen the grown men have to crawl in the church and lead the altar or the or or the, or the, you know, you guys have seen it. And it's and it's been it's been something that has happened. I don't know if it was old school with the baby boomers or or the 70s or whatever. They've suffered some type of abuse. And I said all that to say that when they minister to this culture, they minister from that same spirit. And this culture, you know, I coach young kids. I, I, I deal with the parents, you know, I, I, I've, I've, I've been a barber, I've dealt with the community. They're not built the way that your grandfather was. Not mentally, they're not. So they would consider some of the approaches, hey man, pull your pants up. What's wrong with you, man? You're on your way to hell. What's wrong with you? They would consider that offensive. So I'm asking you, because you, you, you're in the North. All three of us were in North Carolina. I'm, I want to ask you, and bishops from the North as well. We'll go to him as well. But how should our approach be? If we're approaching in love, I know we have to warn. But how should our approach be? Our approach should be gentle, right? Talk to me. Well, you, you can have a, a gentle approach and, and be loving and and show kindness towards people, you know, and, and give them the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ without casting them down and send them to hell. I mean, that's not my 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 main job. My, well, that's not my job to send you to hell. My job is to tell you that Christ died. Okay? Yes. He died and he died a horrible death to pick you up out of any bad, damnable, ugly situation. Okay. That's why he died to pick you up. All right. And so it's my job to share that gospel with you so that now you can see your set. You can see, you, you know, that you're no good, whatever. And you, you see that there's a loving Christ who loves you and he wants to save you, save your soul from the wrath. We, we, we do have to deal with, you know, the wrath to come if we don't change, you, know, you understand. And, and so with the culture that we have, we, you just have to give them the word of God, you know, let's go through the word of God. You can't alleviate them from searching the scriptures. You still must search the scriptures just like I searched them because in them we think we have eternal life. Mm 
okay, you must still develop a prayer life because that's just, that's, that's what a saint is supposed to do. You know, you must, you must show or carry forth the, um, the gifts of the spirit. You, you need to maintain the gifts of the spirit. If you're going to be uh, someone who says that you love Christ, then those gifts should be operating in your life. Okay. And, and, and when, when we can see the gifts of God operating in your life, the gifts of the spirit, you know, then uh, the culture that we live in, you know, and I'm trying to think of how can we, you know, if, if we, the, 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 the uh, I don't, I'm not changing the word, you know, for the culture that you're in, we, we're still going to stick with the word of God. And, 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 and I'm going to meet you where you are. And then we're going to grow together. That's what mm. I want to see you grow together, okay. you know, in, 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 because, you know, and you got to realize, you know, you're probably going to talk about this later sanctification. I believe you're going to have this a part of your series, you know, sanctification is a definite work of grace and, you know, it's continual. It's a continual process. And so, you know, you're going to work with some people. They're going to come and they're going to have struggles. They're going to receive Jesus and they're going to have struggles. Mm -hmm. and, and they're going to have weaknesses. And you're going to have to walk them through. I've seen it. You know, you're going to have to walk them through. I, I heard one preacher said that he was teaching Bible study, still smoking cigarettes. He had to, you know, he had to be set apart. He realized he had to become set apart right. to become more like Christ. Come on. You know, we've, we've heard, you know, and, and, and God can do things miraculously in our lives and deliver you from anything miraculously. And then yeah. there are others who, you know, they have struggles with certain things, but we can't throw them out of the church. You understand right. what I'm saying? You can't throw the baby out of the church. You got to say, you got to teach them. That's how, that's the discipleship program where you're teaching them, giving them, giving them solid word, mm -hmm. right? Because again, we're cleansed through the word of God and the word of God is absolute truth. We can't veer away from the word because it's absolute truth. So I'm going to take you straight to the word of God so you can live and grow thereby. Wow. Elder Cabinets, we're coming to you now. I love what Pastor Chris said there. That is very awesome. Some people have those, those lines. See, see, here's the thing. Here's the, and we're going to get to this later. I know our time is not going to submit, so I'm going to have to beg you guys to come back. But there's a difference. I have to say it. We, we want to be honest with the Southern Black church versus the white churches or the Latino churches or uh, other races. It seems that the black church will send you to hell for anything. Like you just said, the preacher was struggling. He needed to be sanctified, but that just rubbed some people wrong on this line. I'm telling you, when you said that the preacher was smoking cigarettes, some people on this line just sent that preacher to hell. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just going to be honest, but, but there's a level we don't talk about the word sanctification. We don't talk about the Apostle Paul saying we need to mortify, to put to death these, these deeds of the flesh. And it doesn't happen overnight. It's possible it can happen overnight because the Holy Spirit gives you the power to do anything. But nine times out of 10, you have to go from an a baby drinking milk, an immature Christian, to a mature Christian where you can eat meat and walk that way. And, this, and, I, and I love this point here because I know I'm going to have some differences of opinion. Go ahead, Pastor Cabinet, <laughs> Elder Cabinet, <Kavis. laughs> chime in right here. See, I think, I think you have a, like you said, there's a difference in, um, I guess, generations. Uh, right. So the church that I grew up in um, would have held, held me back as a young person um, called to preach at, you know, I was called to preach when I was a teenager, but I didn't really act upon it until about 23. Right. But like many people on here don't know, Bishop Davis is my spiritual father as well. I right. got saved under his ministry. He right. could have seen it. No, I don't think, I don't think you're called, but he, he one worked with me, mm -hmm. you know, and in my weaknesses, in my faults, in my, you know, un misunderstandings, you yeah. know, and, and still put me up. I mean, if, if, if I was to say anybody that had my back as a, as a young minister, 
Bishop Davis had my back. He was always putting me up, always giving me the opportunity. Even when I didn't call myself or think myself worthy, he kept he kept pushing me to to do better. Some right. people don't do that. Some people That's don't right. get that. That's right. Some people, you know, some people. I, I remember uh, uh, Pastor Davis gave me the opportunity to preach at one of our uh, what you call them, uh, 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 when me and Arnold preached. Uh, at a, at a, on a Saturday event, and I felt like I I just bombed out. I even had a older lady said, "Son, it's gonna come. You, you gonna get it one day." And I'm like, Man, I preached hard. I studied. I I brought forth a word in the ten minutes they gave me. Right, right. I brought forth something that was 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 you know sturdy. My first message was time. It's time to grow up. It's time to go from you know the uh, the milk to to the meat. Right, but. Right. It's because, like I said, like I think, you know, if you don't make a person shout or, 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 or you don't, you know, it, it get them to uh, experience an emotional fit, man, you, you, you're not really doing nothing. And, and I think in the South, we have, or in the Black church, as you would say, I mean, we missed the mark on, on, on that on so many times. I'm, I remember Bishop Davis always say, don't, 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 don't hurt the messenger. Get the message. Right. Right. You know. So, I mean, that's, that's my two cents. I like that. I love that. Bishop, take us off. A um, couple of things. Um, and, and, and I think we have to realize the time in which we minister. The Bible says the sons of Issachar understood the times. Right. And, you know, we, we, we are in a, it's not only an ethnic issue, it's also a generational issue. Right. And, and you know, I, I, I did some teaching, if you guys remember, about just the generations, the builders, the boomers, the busters, generation X, generation Y, because our approach has to be tailored to who we're dealing with. Right. Paul said, I became all things to all men that might all means save some. That's right. And right. even though the gospel is universal, our approach has to be tailored to whom we're dealing with. And I think that's part of the problem. Um, I think in, in reference to, to what you said earlier about what we send the he people to hell with, I think even that's cultural. I think, you know, in, in uh, what might be a primarily white church, their issues are abortion. Right. And so, you know, in, in, in the black church, you know, it's, it's, it's lying and stealing, drinking and smoking, you right. know. And I haven't been to very many Latino churches, so I can't tell you what their issues are. But in right. <laughs> any event, you know, every every church has its pet sins mm -hmm. that it that it goes after. And and but I think if we're talking about ministering, especially because I'll be very honest, you know, one of my challenges is that I'm now a middle aged man. You right. know, um, I was I, I started pastoring at 29 years old, so I you know at the time I was cutting edge because I was 29 years old. You know, I'm, I'm not 29 anymore. We're getting ready to celebrate our 25th anniversary. So y'all do the math. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I don't know where I am. So <laughs> even now I'm altering my approach to more of a mentor to develop the youth of our church and the young ministers of our church, because if our church is going to survive past me, should the Lord Terry, we've got to have a younger face, right. you know? And so, with, and, and, and the one thing I do know about, having raised two adult children is that the children and or the young adults of this generation are relationally oriented. Mm -hmm. They really don't care about our doctrine. They really don't care even about our jumping and shouting. They care about the relationship and they will accept the gospel from us. And it doesn't matter if there's an age gap, as long as you're somebody that cares for me, that loves me. And, and really that fits me because I always tell the story that I can't tell you one sermon I heard before I got saved. And now right. y'all trying to figure out how you get saved. I got saved because the saints love me to Christ. Wow. All right. I was, I was, I was eight years old when I came to my church, I was broken because of my family relationship and family dynamics. And my mother took me to this little church at Henderson and those people love me. They embrace me. They love me. They talk to me. I remember the youth pastor and I sitting in the car and he just asked me questions and seemed interested in hearing what I had to say at nine years old. And so one night we were at prayer and he asked me, do you want the Holy Ghost? And right. I said, yes, because somebody who I felt loved me, wanted, offered me the Holy Spirit. And because of him, I went to the altar that night 
and I receive the Holy Spirit. So wow. it's, it's a relational thing. It's a relational connection. And if we're going to win this generation, and it's not the masses, it's, it's, it may not be the mass of altar call. It may not be, you know, where I am right now, I'm baptizing folk one at a time. You know, yeah. one at a time, yeah. one at a time. You know, we were, in the we're in the pandemic. And I got through teaching Bible study, young man who's been at my church, at our church for about, I guess, three years now, but had never received the Holy Ghost. He texts me. When I finished teaching Bible class on Zoom and said, Bishop, I need to be baptized and I need the Holy Ghost. Y'all know how I do that. Monday night, we met him at the church, baptized him. We all sat socially distant. Nobody was within 10 feet of this brother. And I said, just ask the Lord for what you want. The Holy Ghost fell on him. He fell out the chair and started speaking in tongues after about 15 wow. minutes. Because the Lord still saves. The Lord yes. still saves. But, but, but people have to trust us to accept the gospel from us. And yeah. if they don't trust us because they're not sure how we feel about them, they're yeah. not going to accept the gospel from us. Mm -hmm. And so it has to be relational. And this the last one, I'm, and I'm going to shut up. We have to, we have to become crisis managers because if we would be honest, you know, and this is where, you know, I know that um, Elder Cabin is, is a trained counselor. That this is what he does. So counselor, right? He's a trained counselor. All right. His skill is so valuable in this season. Right. Because we have to learn how to be crisis managers. Because if we would be honest, most of us are drawn to Christ in a period of crisis. Wow. And so we've got to be able to address the crisis while we give them the gospel. And then, so not only are we building a soul, we're building better men and women in the process. But it means the church has to move into the area of crisis management, of helping people and, and, and everything you can't lay hands and shout over. You know, some stuff you got to talk through. Some stuff you got to help folk get a job. Some folk got to help folk write a resume. You got to help folk get it back into school. You know, th this is the things that we have to do in ministry because we have to look at reaching the whole person for, so that all of them can be saved and Christ can transform the entire life. That is awesome. That is awesome, Bishop. That is awesome word there. Brother Tony, you can go ahead and unmute everybody. We're getting ready to pray in, few, in a few seconds. If you could just go ahead and unmute everybody and get everybody unmuted. That would be an awesome thing. What Preachers, this has been awesome. This has been awesome. I'm hoping that we can do, that we can pick this back up. I want to end on this note though tonight. It's something very extemporaneous, just a very extemporaneous question. Um, it looks like we have a hand. I don't know if we have a question, um, but, but we have a very, just an extemporaneous uh, tonight. Here's what I want you to do. Pastor Chris, very short. I know preachers, we can go a while. I, I like to keep it within an hour. If you can leave the people, if you, if you had one, one book to leave in the Bible and a one one minute message that you would leave with the people, leave them with one book and one one minute message, what would that be? <laughs> uh, that's a tough question, uh, Pastor Phil, uh, you know, um, but one of my favorite books in the Bible is the Psalm. And it's the hymn book of the Old Testament. And in the Psalm, I find so much, uh, it's a devotion. I mean, it's the hymn book of the Old Testament. There's, it's, it's devotion to God. It, it teaches you devotion. It teaches you uh, uh, prayer. It teaches you uh, who God is. You know, you'll see David wrote over 73 of those Psalms. And he, you see a worshiper who is in fellowship and in communion with, with God, mm -hmm. you know, and so I, I would say that if, if I had that book of Psalms, then I would find sweet relief in my life here on earth. And, and it teaches you so much about God, the in-depth of God, you know, it, it talks about God as being creator God. And so, so that's right off the top of my head. And I guess it's because I preached from it Sunday. Maybe it's because I preached out of it Sunday, but that's <laughs> one of my favorite books in the Bible. And that's the Psalm. And I, and, and I, and so many people need devotion. They need to be, they need devotion. They need a connection with God. And so that's where I find my place of connection. When I was 14 years old, that's where I went and I got connection with God. Awesome. And we're going to deal with devotion. When we do this again, we're going to deal with devotion and praise and worship. Elder Cabinets, leave us with something. Leave us with the book and the one minute, minute message. Um, I've always been intrigued by the story of David and how he came to be king and, and you know, the, the sufferings that he had to deal, deal with. So um, it, it to me, 
to to see him love God the way he did, fall from grace, and then ask to be restored to go come back to God. Come on. That's my that that's my story. Yes. That's my story. That's that 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 resonates with me more than anything. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome other cabinets. Bishop. Well, um, for me tonight, tonight, and, and, and it shifts for me regularly, is, is Romans. Mine too. Um, first of all, because um, the scripture says that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the power of God and salvation to everyone that believeth. From there, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Yes. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You, oh. you can read Romans and get to heaven. Yes. You can read Romans and yes. get all the way to heaven. Yes. Even if you're having a bad day, all things work together for the good. Yes. Because you love God. Come on, Bishop. They're called according to his purpose. Yes, sir. And finally, what shall we say to these things? If God, Hallelujah. for us. Who can be against us? Who can be against us? Glory to God. Everybody just ought to give God a praise right there. Hallelujah. Everybody online just Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody open your mouth. Open your mouth. Give God praise. Glory to God. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Sister Tate. Hallelujah. Yeah, the Lord said he's with us tonight. He said the word went forth in the spirit tonight, and we received it. We received the word that the Lord sent through his servants tonight. Yeah, the Lord is going to bless us with him because he wants us to hear what thus says the Lord. And then as we hear what the Lord has said, we'll work the way the Lord wants us to work. We'll be used in the capacity and with the ability that God has given us to use, and we'll be able to reach the world. We'll be able to reach the law. In order to reach the law, we got to get in the spirit and let the Lord lead us the way to get to them. We don't know how to get to them. We don't know who to get to. But when the spirit gets in us and leads us and guides us and directs us and honor ourselves, we can reach the law. It's very important for us to reach them because the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Lord is concerned about souls being saved. And in order for souls to be saved, we that are saved got a job to do. Oh, we got a job to reach the lost at any cost. We got to go out in the highways. We got to go out in the hands of where the Lord leads us and guides us and directs us. And all our steps, we got to do it for God. How he come to my, the Bible says, they got a land by the Spirit of God, by the sons of God. He come to us. And then the word says, now ye are the sons of God, yes. and it does not yet appear what oh, we yeah. shall be. Mm -hmm. But we know that when he shall appear, we ah, shall be like him, ah, for we shall see him you. as he is. Come mm -hmm. of Thank and you, as a man that has this hope in him, he finds himself yeah, as he is to him. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you. we thank you for your word tonight. Mm -hmm. We thank you for the panel. Yeah, we thank you for that panel. Hallelujah. We are enlightened by the panel. And everyone on it, we give you the glory. Holly. And we give you the praise. We pray that you would bless them one by one. Name my name. Holly. Bless Ella Jamal especially. Bless Ella Chris in especially. Hallelujah to all those other ministers. 
Bless them to go forth like those. Mm -hmm. That the souls of the people will be reached. Mm -hmm. Men and women are dying. Mm -hmm. We don't want nobody to die without Jesus. Mm -hmm. We don't want nobody to die without salvation. Mm -hmm. We come none of our stuff because the Lord said the wages of sin is death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gifts of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We want everybody to have it. Glory to God. Whosoever will, let him come. How can he come? We've come and we want to see somebody else come. Hallelujah. we got a job to do. And we want to do it for Jesus. We want to be led and guided by the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Pray for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Glory to God. Somebody open your mouth. Hallelujah. 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 We praise you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, we all better than that. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Who wouldn't serve an awesome God like this? Hallelujah. Who loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him shall not perish. You won't have to worry about hell. You won't have to worry about eternal damnation. Hallelujah. But you have a savior that will stand in the gap for you. Hallelujah. He took the penalty that you should have received. Hallelujah. He took it upon himself that I'm going to die for you. So, hey, it never gets old. The gospel never becomes obsolete. Hallelujah. But the gospel is real. How they both see on Mahaya for eternity. Glory to God. Eternity. The gospel. And Jesus rose from the dead. The nail print was still in his hand. Hallelujah. The, 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 still in his side. Hallelujah. Because the gospel will be real for eternity. God bless everyone tonight. Is there anyone tonight that would deserve special prayer this week? Hallelujah. If anyone is still muted, I know we've had some problems. If anyone is still muted, you can press star six, star six, and make your request. We're available for requests tonight. And of course, you know, we pray for you seven days a week. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Anyone that needs prayer tonight? Yes, Susan Gordon. I would, I'm requesting prayer for my friend, Kathy Riddick. She was admitted to the hospital. So I'm believing God that she will for healing for Kathy Riddick this week. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless Kathy Riddick tonight. Touch her wherever she is in the hospital. I send and release the angels of God, hallelujah, the spirit of healing to go into the hospital right now for Kathy in the name of Jesus Christ, that she would be touched from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. God, you know the situation, hallelujah, and we stamp it right now. Say that the blood of Jesus is against you, and I speak healing on that situation. I speak that she'll be blessed. I speak that she'll be made whole. I speak that she'll be delivered in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's touch and agree for Sister Amen. Kathy. Hallelujah. Amen. Is there anyone else tonight? Anyone else? Glory to God. Glory to God. We want to be patient, Brother Tony, because some of them have said they've been making requests and, they, and they've been muted. They don't know how to get their phone off mute. Hallelujah. Star six. Star six. Star six. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, preachers, we thank you so much tonight. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a bishop. I'm a school son. So I'm going to ask you to come back. We may do, if you're free, if you're free next week, Pastor Chris, you know me. And Chris, you know I told you I never tell you no. I never tell you no, so I don't look for a no from you. You know, I had just a, maybe one more session. We had some questions that we did not get to. I heard somebody say encore. The people are loving this. And I, and I do expect more people to be on 
next week. It was over 20 tonight. Expect more people to be on next week. So God bless you. If you wouldn't mind, let's see if we can clear our schedule. I'll reach out to you again this week to see if we can get some confirmation. I'm Thank glad you. to come back. I, I enjoyed the dialogue. I enjoyed the fellowship with my sons and with my um, dear friend, um, Chris, and I go all the way back to um, <laughs> 56 and E's. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it, this, it, was a, this, was a, this was a wonderful fellowship. I thoroughly amen. enjoyed myself. Thank you for having me. Amen. Awesome. And, and Phil, y'all, thank you so much. And you know I'll be back anytime you need me. God bless you, sir. Elder Cabinets, thank you so much, sir. Um, you are my fellow brother. Yes, sir. I love y'all very much. Everyone have a great day of the week. We pray that God's blessings in heaven may smile upon you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Shalom. Shalom. Bless you. Thank you, Jamal.